Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking our wooden floor material from the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. First though, let's take a look at the textures that we'll need during this uh, video. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001 and gun scratches 003 both of which I've already downloaded and saved to my hard drive um, and I'll be including a link to them below this video. Okay, let's head over to Max. So here's our scene from the last video. Hopefully it's looking vaguely familiar. <laughs> um, if you'll remember, the Material Converter did the majority of the work for us. It brought in all these nodes and set up the shader and all we needed to do was apply it uh, and then make a minor adjustment to our gloss map um, well, essentially it's a roughness map because we inverted it, or the converter inverted it. Uh, so we added in a multiply node to, to give us some control over the effect that it has on our final shader. Now we're going to be working much more in depth with the nodes today, um, but before we get started I just want to go over what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny, um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be, the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so first of all, let's give us some room to work with. So I'm going to move these nodes out of the way here, move these up here, grab these and move them down, and also move that over there. So we've got a nice bit of space. Now, the first thing I'll do is bring in our scratches map. Yeah, um, oh, sorry, our smudges map, I should say. So let's go to maps, octane, no. Octane, thank you, and RGB image. And that gives us two nodes. It gives us our node for importing the texture and a little 2D transform for adjusting the scaling and whatnot, which we will need to do. So let's double click on the image and find our scratches file. Um, in my case, it is, I said scratches again, didn't I? Sorry, floor smudges. <laughs> and here we go. So we've got a few different options. Um, I'm going to use the overlay 16-bit one. Um, with a 16-bit file, you get uh, it's, a, it's got more color depth, which means we get more detail out of the texture. So always use that if you've got the chance to. But before hitting open, I'm going to hit uh, under the gamma correction sections here, override. Now, as a general rule, if your texture contributes to the color of a material, such as the color map uh, and the reflection map, you'd leave that on automatic because you want gamma corrections to be applied to those textures. For ones that don't affect the color, like overlays like this, uh, gloss maps, roughness maps, displacement maps, etc., you would not want any gamma corrections applied. You want to override that so we get the full detail of the texture and nothing else gets in the way of it. So that's why we're clicking that. Okay, so the next stage is to introduce this into our existing roughness map, yeah? So it's gonna be here, this this space here. Now, what I do in most rendering engines um, is use something like a composite node um, and set the mix type to screen, because a screen mix is a brilliant way of taking the bright areas of a map like this one we've got here and overlaying them on top of a roughness map. However, Octane doesn't have a screen node, um, much to my frustration. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is make our own. Um, or, or not make our own node, but make our own screen operation with a few other nodes, okay? So down here, where we've got a bit of space, um, I'm gonna bring in a few different nodes. We're going to need a invert texture, uh, which I'm going to duplicate. Oh, now I'll just do it again. <laughs> Sorry, um, another invert texture, and then another invert texture. So we need three in total and I'm gonna place them roughly like that. And then I'm going to bring in a multiply texture. Okay, so what a screen operation essentially does is it takes 
two inputs, inverts them, then runs a multiply operator on them, then inverts the output, and then sends it out. That, that, that's what a screen does, and this is what we're going to replicate with these four nodes, okay? So let's give them some names so we know what we're doing. Uh, we'll call it SC for screen, in one. So why didn't that change the name? Ah, oh, it's because I didn't have it selected. Oops. Smudges. Let's try that again. Okie dokie. So, screen in one. And then screen in two. We'll call this screen out. And this will be our screen. Okay, so now we just connect these nodes up exactly how we've placed them, like so, and this is our makeshift screen operator, okay? So now we can move these nodes up to where they're gonna need to be, make a bit more room, and we can get to work. So the roughness map, um, which is here, uh, will feed into screen in one, if it will let me. Ugh. There we go. The smudges map will put into screen in two. And then the screen out one will put into our roughness input of our shader. And you won't notice much of a change, uh, which is good. Or is it? We should see some smudges now, shouldn't we? Uh oh. Did I forget to change the gamma on that? Yes, I did. I could have sworn I hit override on that. Maybe it, does, it didn't work for some reason, but yeah, if you run into that problem, just change the gamma from, from 2.2 to one, and now we can see the smudges appearing on our map. Um, and it's not looking too bad. We do have a few issues though. One, they are a little too strong, um, and they're also scaled incorrectly. Um, these little smudges here are supposed to be footprints, and if you look at the size of the floorboards, that would be some fairly tiny feet. So, let's get that fixed first of all by changing the scale of our uh, smudges. Let's try a value of 0.3. Nope, that's made them tiny. Sorry, other, other direction built. Let's try a value of about five. That's possibly too high, maybe three. That's about right. Uh, yeah, it's going to be somewhere between two and three. Uh, we'll leave it on two just because we can still clearly see them. Uh, with the positioning of three, it was kind of hard to make them out. Uh, so we'll leave that on two. Um, and that's, that's the smudges pretty much done. Aside from, as I said, we need to add in some control. So to do that, we're going to do exactly what we did on our original roughness map. We're going to add in a multiply node, which I'll do now. And multiply. And then feed in the input from the smudges map into the texture one, and then feed that into screen in two. And we'll call this adjust, because it's adjusting our smudges. And I've just done it again, haven't I? So I do apologize, I've been jumping between quite a few applications and on this particular one you have to double click and on the other one you didn't. Anyway, adjust. Okay, so we have our smudges and our adjustment and now this value will allow us to control the, the effect our smudges have. So if I set that to zero, our smudges will disappear completely and at one, that's kind of the maximum which is, as we said, too strong. So we'll try a value of about 0 0.5, 0 0.55, something like that. Maybe just a little higher. Because it is supposed to be a very subtle effect. You don't want the smudges to look obvious, or uh, that'll make the floor look dirty. We're not going for dirty, we're just going for just used, yeah? A nice clean floor that's actually had a bit of use to it, um, like a real floor would. And that's kind of what we're getting here, which is good. So that's us done with the smudges. Um, pat on the back there for yourself if you've been following along because that's quite a few notes. <laughs> okay, thankfully the next stage is relatively simple by comparison. 
and that's the scratches. So we're going to, need to bring in our scratches map first of all, and that's maps octane RGB image, and we get the same two nodes, an image and a transform. Now within the image one, I'll call that scratches just so we know what we're doing, and we'll go and navigate to where our scratches folder is, gun scratches 003, and like before, I'm going to use the overlay 16 bit. You'll notice with this one, you do get some other options. There's a displacement map and a normal map, uh, but I found the overlay one works just fine. I'm going to hit override again, and then hit open. But once, yeah, once again, the scratches are set to 2.2 gamma. I'm not quite sure why it does that, so I'll just change that manually. Okay, so now we have our scratches in place. It's actually really simple to use. You just literally connect up the scratches to this bump input and we'll start to see our scratches, yeah? But we have a few problems. The scaling is slightly off, no, not too much actually, uh, but we're, we're gonna possibly make a slight adjustment to the scaling. Uh, and also it's way too strong. Uh, and finally, the scratches are going in the wrong direction. Um, you might be able to tell from the video, I can see a few scratches that are making it obvious. Say, say this one here, yeah? You can really see how it's casting a bit of a shadow on this uh, bottom part of it. And that, that indicates that the bumps are bumping out of the floor, whereas obviously a scratch cuts into the floor, so we need to fix that. Now the way to do that is to invert the scratches map, yeah? So if we go here and click on invert, that fixes our first problem. The scratch is now clearly bumping into the floor, which is exactly what we want. Next though, we will need to adjust the scale. So let's change this to about a value of 0.5. Might be a bit over the top. No, I think that'll work. Yeah, that works just fine. So our last problem is they're way too strong, yeah? So in the exact same way we've been adjusting the strength of other maps, we'll do this again. We'll add in a octane multiply texture. Uh, there we are. And then feed the input of the scratches into texture one. Uh, and then the output into, come on, into the bump map, there we go. So now we have this adjust node, which is what I'm gonna call it to um, control the the strength of the scratches here. So if I turn this down to probably a value of about 0.05, I would imagine, even that's too strong, 0.02. Yeah, nice sort of subtle scratch here and there. Looks, looks good. Right, that is us done with the nodes and there were quite a few in that video. So, <laughs> uh, Right, let's get that closed down. Open up the settings panel and let's just set ourselves up for a final render. I'll pause the recording while that's running. Okay, so there's our final render and it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with the smudges, They're just, just the right amount of effect, a nice subtle effect. The scratches are possibly a little bit too strong still. I'd, I'd probably lower those just a tad, but uh, certainly for the purposes of a tutorial, I think that just does uh, just fine. So in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material from the previous video and added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived-in feel. 